Broadcasting live from Atzal, the pl cave, cave of Eternity. Cave, we just, cave we, of Eternity. Cave of Eternity. Yeah. Atzal, comma, Cave of Eternity. On the plane of Ixalan, this is Tap Tap Concede. We just looked up the card. Got it in one. Yep, nailed it. Perfect take. Uh, Graham here. James. Cameron here. And it's February, and we still have a box full of packs, and it's time for the February Cracker Pack. Uh, mm -hmm. Tap Tap Concede is brought to you by Card Kingdom. Cardkingdom.com slash LRR. That puts our affiliate code on there, which tells them that we sent you. And we send you because we like them. We use Card Kingdom ourselves. We think they're great. Their customer service is A+. And their shipping is super fast. And if you tell them, Loading Ready Run sent me, button please. You'll get a little one inch button, which uh, currently says, just flunge. Classic. That's a good one. I did that the other day, and it uh, medium worked out. Mm. Didn't win the game, but... I would say that didn't work then. Well, yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to win on the flunge. Well, if you I, put I, him to two. That's true. I eventually, I eventually won that game, but not mm. be... Maybe it was because of that, but not on the... Oh, okay, okay, okay. It was definitely an inertia thing. Yeah, exactly. You know what feels real good in Rivals of Ixalan? Mm -hmm. Still, opponent scooping in response to you putting uh, uh, Curse of the Vampire on Adanto Vanguard. <laughs> oh, yeah, or Mark of the Vampire. Mark of the yeah, Vampire, oh, yeah. That's good. That one feels good. Uh, oh, also, the show is brought to you by you and your kind support of our Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. Oh, the Mark of the Vampire on Adanto Vanguard is like, you, vampire, you are also a, a vampire. vampire. And he's like, like, sure. Okay. Uh, all right. Sure, whatever. But so that makes it, you could attack as a... As a 5-3. Five, 5-3 three. Five, three with lifelink and pay 4 to make it indestructible. Yeah, so you yep. net one life every so time you net one life. you pay. Yeah, even if you pay. Team 3s. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right, let's get into it. Usually opponents give it a couple of turns yeah. to try to rip the second removal spell. 18. 18, wow. Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10... 14, 16, 17, 18. Ooh, it's a pack Ooh. of Weatherlight. Easy. Oh. Going way back. What card is that on the front of the Weatherlight pack? I don't know. It's the uh, weird. Um, oh, hey. Oh, this one's, this one's from, from, from Trick. Hey, Trick. Huh. Thanks for the pack of Weatherlight. To save the Weatherlight has been kidnapped, and the remaining crew of the flying ship must risk everything to recover her. From the port of Imperial Banalia to the mysterious forest of Lulanwar to the volcanic heart of Bogarden, adventure awaits them at every turn. Come aboard Weatherlight and book passage for adventure! <gasps> this is when they first tried to do an ongoing storyline. Mm -hmm. Put the, uh, contact with the reader to see if it picks it up. Is it what it is? Uh, no. Is it actually from a card? They it generally are. But yeah. I don't recognize it. I only recognize it as the art from the pack of Weatherlight. Yeah, this was given to us by uh, Trick, who was up for the um, Unstable pre release. Mm -hmm. So he had a couple packs with him in case someone opened um, oh. did something of the pack. What's yeah, that card the, called? Is it just Color some, of the pack? Some in the pack. Or some, some in the pack. Yeah. yeah. No, no, it never came up. No. So he was like, you here, have this pack of Weatherlight. Yeah. yeah. So first up, you know who's smart? It's Gerard. It's Gerard's <gasps> wisdom. Ooh. Two white white sorcery for each card in your hand, gain two life. Boo. Wow, that's not very wise. Far <laughs> really. No, Gerard's no. not leveraging that very well. Yeah. Apparently, wisdom is his dump stat. Oh, I have no idea what. Okay. Hmm. Whatever. I have no idea what the rarities are, so we're just going to go through it. Mm -hmm. Sylvan Hierophant. Uh, okay. One in a green for a one-two. Uh, if Sylvan Hierophant is put into a graveyard from so. Uh, when it dies, yeah. exile it, then return a creature card from your graveyard oh. to your hand. That actually seems not the worst, but not the yeah. best. Yeah, right. Like it, yeah. Ho, oh. hey oh, here we go. Cone of Flame. Oh. Yep. Well, there we go. Everyone There's loves this one. Yeah. <laughs> three red red for a sorcery. Cone of Flame deals three damage to one target, two damage to another target, and one damage to a third target. Mm. They do have to be different targets, though. Yes, but this card is just completely I remember bonkers. In, this was in Origins? Yep. This was yeah. reprinted in a core set pretty recently. Yeah. And uh, I recall you did occasionally have to be like, I target my own guy with the one. Sure. Mm -hmm. But I kill your two guys. I mean, the, the there's the... Um... It's similar art, too. It's someone up in that corner of the card firing yeah. a cone of flame out of their hands. Yeah, because yeah, it was obviously Chandra in the Origins reprint. But, yeah, it, I mean... Was like, it? Yeah, it must have been Chandra. I thought it was some sort of monster thing. Oh, maybe. Oh, oh, it yeah. was, too. Oh, it's, yeah. a, it's, oh, a, it's, a, it's a Viashino. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, also, I check this out. Welcome Deck 2016. Yeah. Ooh. 
I just oh, I, I've never little, seen that the intro. 30, the little 30 card Ooh. welcome decks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, next up is Call of the Wild. Two red, sorry, red. Two green, green. I'm having slight color aphasia this morning. I almost said that Cone of Flame was blue. Call of the Wild, two green, green. Enchantment. For two green, green, reveal, so it does nothing by itself, but it has an ability. For two green, green, reveal the top card of your library to all players. <laughs> I love the old card wording. If that card is a creature card, put it into play. Otherwise, bury it. Bury it, which means put it into your graveyard. Bury was an old term for kill, but it can't be regenerated? I think so. Wasn't it? Yeah. That I sounds about right. I don't remember. I think it just means, I think they just mean put it into your graveyard. Yeah. 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 Huh. Uh, yeah, bury did mean kill and can't be regenerated, but you can't regenerate something that never came into play in the yeah. first place. Yeah. So the current version is just... What? Yeah. Ugly. Yeah. <laughs> Although it's the, the white border. border. It's the white border and the predominantly light background. The gray. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like... Huh. Those two reels really stand out, though. Whatever yeah. the hell they are. I do like reveal to all players. So that's a rare in eighth edition. So this is probably the rare here because we've had three. What are probably uncommons? Un uncommons, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, next up, hey, oh, oh, I like this printing of it too. Mindstone. Nice. Yep. Two, Great card. Two colorless for an artifact. Tap to add one colorless mana to your mana pool. Play this ability as a mana source. Thanks, old templating. And for one, and tap and sack it. Draw a card. Very good, and I, I do like the old, I do like the brown, the brown treatment. Uh, betrothed of fire. What? One in a red creature enchantment. Sacrifice an untapped creature, an enchanted creature gets plus two plus oh until end of turn. Or sacrifice enchanted creature, and all your creatures get plus yeah. two plus oh until end of turn. That's kind of neat. I mean, it huh. does stone nothing on its own. No, not really. Yeah. But it can trumpet blast your team if you put yeah. this on something with summoning sickness, the, I guess. Yeah, the second ability, I think, is a lot more Significantly exciting. better than the first yeah. ability. Ooh, Haunting Misery. One black black sorcery. Remove X creature cards in your graveyard from the game. So exile X creature cards from your graveyard. Haunting Misery deals X damage to target player. Uh, I mean... It's a burn spell. It's like a right? finisher. <laughs> yeah, sure. For three mana. But I want to I see if Alex thinks this is Highlander playable. <laughs> He's going to say no. Yeah. I mean, I mean, probably. Yeah. Probably. Maybe his response will be apathy. Single blue wow, creature back. enchantment. Yeah. Little Phil Foglio art. Good uh, Lord. Enchanted creature does not untap during its controller's untap phase. During the upkeep of enchanted creature's controller, that player may discard a card at random to untap that creature. Boo. So this doesn't tap it itself. The creature has to be tapped already. And then they can pitch a card at rent. I mean, it doesn't seem terrible. Yeah. For a single blue? Yeah, I guess that's fair. I during mean, the upkeep of the oh, it's only during the upkeep. Yeah, so they can't. I, I, that, that means they can't have drawn for the turn yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, this could be. If it wasn't like. Oh, mm. If they don't have a during card to discard, they can't pay that. Yeah. Correct. I mean, could you activate this multiple times on your upkeep? Like player discard a card. No, it's a it's one trigger. Okay, so you couldn't discard like, like hold priority, discard like five cards to it. No, I don't think so. <laughs> and then it'll just be, untap it'll be, a creature a bunch of times. It'll, the template now will be like at the beginning of the upkeep, mm. and then that one ability goes on the stack. Right, yeah. right, right. In fact, that is too. Yeah. Right. You Otherwise, this this could be a fun thing to do to your own creature. Multiple copies of Apathy mm. on the same creature. Angelic renewal. Uh, one in a white for an enchantment. If any creatures are put into your graveyard from play, you may bury Angelic Renewal. <laughs> okay, sacrifice Angelic Renewal and put one of those creatures into play. Oh, so you, it's just an enchantment that sits there, and then any time a creature dies, you get to choose whether or not to sack this enchantment. Mm -hmm. And if you do, then that creature just goes back into play. It's yeah. like an insurance card. So. Okay, and it gets you a new ETB trigger. All right, sure. That could yeah. be that could be that could be good. Also, it's Rebecca K art. Yeah, and which is always value. Yeah. Rouge Elephant. Mm. Ro Rogue Elephant. Single green for a 3-3. Three, three. Okay. When it comes we've, to play, sacrifice a forest. We've recently had this card, have we not? I, I want to say so. that we've had something very similar. Very, Only, very similar. There was the elephant from Kaladesh where you needed to pay energy when it came into play. There, yeah, there was the elephant, but I feel like there was another one. There was a one mana 3-3. Three, three, uh, there was the Dryad. In Ixalan, but that was your opponent got to tutor for another land. Yeah, no, that yeah, was that, that was the card that just mm -hmm. got which, worse which is the more I read it. Because this one puts you down on land, but yeah. puts them up on up land. Up on land, yeah. Which I think is worse. Is worse, yeah. Mm -hmm. I kind of wish that this was a rogue, <laughs> rogue creature elephant. type. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. summon <laughs> rogue elephant. 
Yeah. Or some rogue elephant. Summon elephant rogue. It reminds me of um, Scythe mm. Tiger. Yep, I love that card. 3-2 from Zendikar. Yep. Mm. It's, I think it's the same, actually, but it's a 3-2. Oh, no, it also has another ability. Does it have a shroud or something stupid? Yeah, I believe the tiger has a shroud. That's really dumb. Does it? <laughs> Let's find out. Scythe? Mm. Yeah, Scythe Tiger from Zendikar. Uh, yep, it did. Wow. Oh, you just have to sac and sacrifice it. Yeah, sacrifice a land. Yeah. Yeah, sacrificing any land is so much better than sac having to sac a forest. Yeah. I don't mind Rogue Elephant, honestly, as a turn one. Like, turn one, three, three is pretty scary. Yeah. Yeah, that does really clock your opponent hard. Mm hmm. All right. Um, next. Next. Dusk Rider Falcon. It's a 1 1 flyer for one and a white with protection from black. Uh, sure. Uh, sure. Ooh, Landmore Druid. Holy moly. Uh, one and a green for a one-two elf. Tap and sack it to untap all forests. All forests? I guess so. Like, not even just yours? Yeah, all just forests. all forests, yeah. Hmm. That's is this like, is this going to secretly be like the most expensive card in this pack? <laughs> No, no, I don't think so. No? I, it's, I think so far it's Mind Stone at like a quarter, maybe. <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> oh, sweet. Lava Storm. On three. Oh. One. Well, you said on three, and then I you hit on like one and a half. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got excited. <laughs> Lava on, Storm man. with the dabbing in the art. Uh, oh, you I ever, don't know why. It... You ever dab so hard a mountain explodes? <laughs> yeah. Uh, three red, red. Instant as an additional cost to cast Lava Storm Dab. Uh, Lava Storm deals two damage to each attacking creature or two damage to each blocking creature. Obviously, uh, dabbing is not actually part of the cost. It looks like it's very dramatic. It's like the volcano's blowing up and she's like, no. Yeah, but it's definitely a dab. Yeah. yeah. But uh, this card's okay. <laughs> Could you imagine also just like a volcanic eruption happening and your first reaction is. <laughs> yeah. All right. Shadow Rider. Is uh, two black black for a three three knight with flanking. Sure didn't see flanking when I first read that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, flanking. As a reminder, is whenever a creature without flanking blocks a creature with flanking, the blocking creature gets minus one minus one until end of turn. Mm. So if you wonder, block the three three with a one one, it just dies before damage. Would you put like in in way back in the day? Would you put lure effects on these guys? Oh, and then just their whole team has to block it? Yeah, and then you get, like, you four for two get, them? Ooh, any, that'd be interesting. Any creature that blocks it gets minus... Yeah. Oh, that could be interesting. Yeah. And then, like, they just throw, have to throw an army of, like, two twos in front of this thing? What an ugly son of a bitch. Yeah. It's not even necessarily bad art. It's just that is one really grotesque-looking mother. Yeah. And his horse is no treat his horse is yeah. weird. And also, what are they standing in? Like, I guess it's a cave... But it's a real pretty, like, it's a very perfect cave. Yeah. It almost looked like water at the first, when I first saw it. Could be the moon and some weird clouds. Oh, yeah, I'm that's not true. seeing the shadow they're riding. Uh, is, is the horse's name Shadow? Yeah, Maybe. that's Shadow Facts. In mm -hmm. a world of complete darkness, it has no shadows to fear. But, that, but I thought it was well, from the Well, then that's the not the moon, because the moon yeah. clearly is giving off light. Huh. I'm a bit lost on this one. Me too. Let's move <laughs> like on. A 3-3 our... three, three for 4 is probably quite good. Last yeah. card from the... Oh, God. Oh, man. Our last card from uh. this pack, Manta Ray. One blue blue for a 3-3 three, three fish with Island Home. God. Which is, if defending player controls no islands, this creature cannot attack. But wait, it's worse. If you control no islands, sacrifice this creature. Uh, also, it cannot be blocked except by blue creatures, which your opponent probably has if they have islands, which yes. is the only condition by which this manta ray can attack. State of your card, mate. Wow, this is terrible. Yeah. I mean, we go with Cone of Flame here, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, easily. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's the only card that actually you've seen modern day reprinting, right? Well, yeah. that and... Mind Stone? I don't know. I don't think Mind Stone's actually seen... Mind Stone's been reprinted with the new border. Or yeah. maybe I'm just thinking oh, of yeah, online yeah. cube. No, maybe no, I'm just I thinking think of online cube. I think it... Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah, it's been... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Mind Stone's been printed quite a bit, actually. Uh, there's a 10th edition version, There's and it was in Commander 2014 and 15. Oh, okay. And cool. then there's also, like, a and promo iconic, version. And Iconic Mask. It's literally yeah. a brain. 
Oh yeah, the Mind Stone with the oh, actual was, brain. And uh, we saw it actually um, last week in the uh, Jace versus Chandra dual deck. Oh, oh right, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. It's it's a really good card. It is. Nice. All right, let's go next. next pack. Oh yeah, here's the. Yep. Just bump. I uh, go I away. really enjoy that art actually. Five. 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 One, two, three, four, five. Cheddar it's cheese. Oh. Dragon's Maze. Oh, okay. interesting. Okay. Donated to LLR from. That's us. Alex Milstein. Milstein. Hey, here's a booster for TTC. Friday nights got me and kept me into magic. This was my first set. I hope to see you at GP Portland. Ooh. That. <laughs> I, 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 mean, I don't even know what GP. Oh, this is written on a. Oh, on a 2015. Round seven for the Magic Pro Tour qualifier Dragons of Tarkir 2015. Match slip. Uh, so that would have been three years ago. Between two people who aren't even this person. This is between someone named Jason <laughs> and someone named Eric. Huh. Um, huh. Well, I hope. I don't know when we got this. I, we, I assume it came in mail? We, we have been to GP Portland before. So maybe we met you? I don't, I don't know. Think I probably not. <laughs> it's probably a different GP Portland. Hmm. Well, I don't know. No. Like it's been a it's been we have a, a, a few years up since we've been to oh, that's cool. GP Portland. But anyways, all right, here we go. First up, Armored Wolf Rider is a four six for three green white. Yeah. I remember this guy didn't really have a role. No. Uh, once my opponent played like two of them, and I was like, huh. I actually lose this game now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes, <laughs> like I can actually I can't do anything yeah, about I mean, a pair of four sixes. Yeah. But generally speaking, this would table and table and table and table. Yeah, like the they're like Thraben Hounds plus one plus one mm -hmm. is probably okay. <laughs> yeah. Right? But uh. Is it clue stone? Three mana artifact, tap to add blue or red to your mana pool, and for blue and red and tap and sack it, draw a card. The clue stones this was part of why Dragon's Maze was not a great draft set because it was a small, it was a very small set, and ten of the commons were clue stones. Yep. yep. So you typically had like, my guess is more than one in a pack. My guess is two in this pack. Mm -hmm. uh, it just felt bad. Oh man, we got there. No, this is actually one. This of is the, the only clue stone in the pack. Wow. All right. Wait, do you think like this came out many years before? But do you think this was uh, inspiration for the clue? Absolutely. Tokens for later on. I, I remember seeing the clues uh, being spoiled yeah. and thinking, this is how I want to open these. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Just bonuses attacked to other better cards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next hey. up, Rubble Belt Maka. This oh. card was good. Yeah. Three and a red for a 3-3. Three, three. Cat, so it's a hill giant. But wait, it has Blood Rush, which is you pay one red and discard it. So you play this from your hand. Target attacking creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. Blood so, Rush was a pretty cool mechanic. Yeah, mm -hmm. Blood Rush sort of turned any creature with Blood Rush into a combat trick. Yeah. It was an ability, so it couldn't be countered by typical counter magic, and it was almost always plus X plus X, where X and X are, or plus X plus Y, where X and Y are the power and toughness of the creature with Bloodthirst. Yeah. So this is a giant growth in red. Yeah. Or just a 3 3, but generally you use it as a trick i don't know like yeah red uncounterable giant growth is actually pretty darn good yeah mm -hmm. well it meant that the gruel deck never had to make the decision between running tricks and running running yep. creatures yeah. yeah it's like i don't have any creatures okay i'll play it i have creatures that can attack i'm gonna keep it yeah. mm -hmm. hired torturer two and a black for a two three with defender and with an ability for three and a black and tap target opponent loses two life, then reveals a card at random from his or her hand. <laughs> okay. The, the the card reveal was sort of irrelevant, but I I definitely lost a couple games to this guy. Yeah. It was it really was, stupid, but yeah. they have a board state or a big it, old clog. Well, there there was the defender deck in uh, Ravnica, mm. or Return to Ravnica, right? right. So it, it for that deck to be viable, you needed cards with defender in all three sets. Mm -hmm. Oh. I just what what why hired torturer? Like yeah. is, the, is the implication that most torturers, torturers work for free? Work for free? Like I guess so. Do they just no, do it I for love the I, job? I think most of them are on retainer. This guy's a contractor. Oh, oh. I, see. I see. Yeah, all our normal all our normal torture. We got so much torturing going on. All <laughs> yeah. of our normal torturers are busy. 
Let's go on monster.com. So, yeah. So, like, if you're if you're a prisoner, do you want to get the hired torturer or do you want to get the... Get the town work book. Get the normal one. Uh, yeah, do you want I, the one who's in it for... for uh, Who's just here for a paycheck? No, or? yeah, you want the one that's... Um, I guess you kind I of... I mean, look at the flavor text. Follow your passion, I always say. Might as well get paid to do what you love. Oh. Mm. Yeah, see? Mm. This, guy, this guy enjoys his work. Mm. Looks like he's been practicing on himself. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, but you know, he, he enjoys his work, but as they say, you know, never uh, never do what you're good at for free. Mm -hmm. mm. That's that's one of my one of my favorite uh, characters in uh, wrestling right now. Oh? Baron Corbin, mm -hmm. the lone wolf. And he's having this backstage discussion with one of the other wrestlers, and he's like, ever since you were a kid, you were watching wrestling, and you wanted to grow up and be the champion, and I want to be like Macho Man. That's not me. I'm very good at beating people up. <laughs> and when you're good at something, you don't do it for free. <laughs> that's why I'm here. <laughs> and it was like, oh, sweet. Cool. Okay, yeah, Character that's... defining promo. All yeah, right, I get Okay, it. I like that. Uh, now for some filth. Drown in filth. Mm. Black, green, sorcery. Choose target creature. Put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. Then that creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn for each land in your graveyard. Not necessarily in the four that you yeah. mill, but yep. just in your graveyard as a whole. This this would wreck people. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You ha you obviously had to be in the right deck, and picking this up in Dragon's Maze was not necessarily a good call. But yeah, like, uh, yeah. Dragon Phil definitely could put in work. See, mm -hmm. Golgari is interesting in terms of how the you know like it was one of the you know the graveyard matters mm -hmm. set or uh, thing. But unlike most graveyard matters things, it wasn't remove things from your like. It, it rewarded you for just having a big graveyard. You didn't actually yeah. want to. It didn't actually remove things from your graveyard. Well, yeah. The, well, I scavenging mean, did kind of. Yeah. I guess, uh, but yeah. yeah. But just the like having you know having uh, uh, the all the lands or having a whole bunch of random stuff in your graveyard would help out. Hmm. Here's tech against that. Crypt incursion. Two and a black for an instant exile. All creature cards from target player's graveyard. You gain three life for each card exiled this way. Don't think I ever played this card. I... Nor did I ever see it played against me, I don't think. I did. It's one of those ones that's like you never ever see it, nor should you, but that one time that you do see it, it's backbreaking. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Right? You're like, really? This? Opal Lake Gatekeepers. Three and a blue for a 2 4 Vidalcan Soldier. Uh, when Opal Lake Gatekeepers enters the battlefield, if you control two or more gates, you may draw a card. I remember liking these guys. I don't remember. Yeah, they're, they're actually right. good. Yeah, they were okay. the The whole gatekeeper cycle was okay. I think the I recall. Well, I mean the, the um the black ones. Yeah, they gave minus two minus two to a creature, didn't oh, they? Oh, right. I think so. yeah. yeah. This is why everyone was scrambling for gates in the Dragon's Maze pack. Yeah, yeah, that was always weird. Like that that threw me off with the draft for mm. this. Like that how. All the basic lands. How, how ridiculously high-picked the gates were, considering what they were. Cause, yeah. Because it was a m massive multicolor whatever. We, yeah. we got a Golgari guild gate in this pack, by the way. Because, mm. again, the base, there was no basic lands in Dragon's Maze. It was only gates. Funnest one to say. Yes. Golgari guild gate. Golgari. Yeah. Put we, that coffee down. down. Um, Crawl Warrior is next. One and a green for a 2-2. Two, two. It's a bear, but it's an insect warrior. And for five and a green, it gets plus three, plus three until end of turn, which was actually relevant. Yeah, it was okay. <laughs> like, weirdly. I mean, like, they've printed numerous 2-2s two for two over the years in green that yeah. can pump itself for a certain this, amount this of mana This very for. expensive. Yeah, this one's a little on the high side, like, my favorite being, like, Dark dark Thicket Wolf. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Which is the 2-2 two, two for 2 in Innistrad in that mm -hmm. you could pump it for 2, plus 2, plus 2 for 2 and a green, I believe. Yeah. Which is like, yeah, that's that's a good card. Mm -hmm. um, this card is fine. If you had, But Dark Thicket Wolf, you can only do once per turn. It's true. If you have 12 mana, if you, have 12 you, can, mana you, can you can pump can... Crawl Warrior twice. And it's, I it's, saw it happen. But then it's still just a... It, it's a, what a is giant it, door. Eight, eight? It's an 8-8. Eight, eight. Yeah, but it's just like, okay, I block <laughs> Right, it's just, throw a bird token under it. Yeah, well, it's, you just then it's then it's just one in a green for the abyss. Yeah, <laughs> just it just kill, kills a creature every turn. Fair. Uh, Threat of activation. Wake the reflections. Single white mana. Sorcery. Populate. That's it. Populate was uh, the reminder text is put a token onto the battlefield that is a copy of a creature token you control. Uh, I don't think it's worth a card to have just populate. No, agreed. This is the test card. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and like, 
I, I'm glad that they printed it. You know, it's like, what can we, what's the, I, instant speed would have been crazy. Mm. Yes. So. Well, I mean, that would have basically just been straight up removal almost. Awe for the guilds. This, I don't think I saw played. Uh, no, two no. and a red for a sorcery. Monocolored creatures can't block this turn. Good art. Key art, as I recall. But yeah. Yeah. The, the card not so good. It's a showstopper. Uh, one black red instant. Until end of turn, creatures you control gain. When this creature dies, it deals two damage to target creature and opponent controls. What an odd card. <laughs> Hmm. How do you craft a board state where that's good for you? You don't. This seems like one of those cards that's like turns a complete blowout into also kind of bad for your opponent, mm -hmm. but not. No, this is a very very bad card. If you're, <laughs> if you're doing some kind of like aristocrats thing, where you just like create a bunch of tokens and then sacrifice them all. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. But yeah. You're, if you're doing that, you're that's kind of the point of it, that you don't need this on top of that. I don't know. Do you this think is thing that gets in your aristocrats list. This is this is a bad <laughs> this card. This is the that worst blood artist F ever at the time. Yeah, <laughs> this is the worst blood artist ever because it only hits their creatures. Yeah, stops you dying. I guess. I guess so. Woodlot crawler. Oh, blue black for a two one insect with forest walk and protection from green. This wow. Is, this is another true name, Nemesis, in some, in, in yeah. some matchups. Yeah. Pretty right? Right? Six sideboard tech, but. I, I mean, had, otherwise, it's just a two for two. I had this two, in the Chaos like, Draft okay. at Vegas, I think. I'm trying to remember when the most recent Chaos Draft I did, I did was. And it was pretty all right. Oh, here's, prob here's probably the first pick Turn and Burn. Mm -hmm. hey. So it's a split card. Uh, which is to say that you turn it sideways, there's two two different cards. So turn is two and a blue. Target creature loses all abilities and becomes an, a zero one red weird until end of turn. And burn is one and a red instant. Burn deals two damage to target creature or player. Mm -hmm. And the split cards in Dragon's Maze had fuse, which is that you can pay the full amount to do both halves. Yeah. So, at its worst, well, as worst, I guess it's either turn or burn. The fuse, at its worst, is I your crazy giant bomb, I turn into an 0-1 with no abilities and deal two damage to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's five damage killed basically any creature. But at its best, as fused, you could really ruin combat. Mm -hmm. Right? It'd be like, that creature is an 0-1 and I kill that creature. Both your creatures die. And mine are fine. Yeah. Yep. Uh, our rare, however, interestingly, is Notion Thief, which is two blue black for a 3 1 human rogue. It has flash. And if an opponent would draw a card except the first one he or she draws in each of his or her draw steps, instead, that player skips that draw and you draw a card. Remember the first time this happened on um, a Star City stream? Yeah. And they were like, we're going to see it, we're going to see it, because someone use the brainstorm ability of a Jace, mm -hmm. which is the draw three cards, yep. look at your hand, and then put two cards back on top of your library. So they activated the ability of the Jace. Their opponent flashed in Notion Thief. So that meant the controller of the Notion Thief drew three cards, yep. and the Jace player still had to put two cards back on top of their library. And yep. since they had zero Jace, Jace's loyalty was at three. Next turn swung in with the Notion Thief. Killed Jace. <laughs> like that feel where you're like, oh, that's weird that they let me put in Jace with four mana open. Well, mm -hmm. might as well brainstorm. What a fun card. <laughs> I think I, both players were like, okay, that was pretty cool. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, that's 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 powerful magic. Yeah. Uh, that said, out of this pack, I think I still take Turn and Burn just because it's the most versatile. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Turn and Burn, um, like Maka was okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, not actually super. I mean, great pack. I mean, Guildgate like, is always a relevant choice. Yeah, yeah. Guildgate's like, always relevant, but I'll take turn and burn in that one. Here we go. Um, the burn card, I thought. Yeah, it's the burn card. Both packs we picked yeah. the burn card. True. All right, here we go. Oh, oh god. Oh, goodbye. goodbye. I guess this is the last pack we're doing. Seven. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hey, going Ooh. even more recent. It's Amonkhet. This was given to us by Marauding Seb. Uh, somewhere. 
I wish I remember where that was. This looks like my writing. Somewhere on the planet. Probably mail time? Possibly. You're usually pretty diligent at, at cons. I, I try to be, yeah. Oh well. Well, thank you, Seb. Mm-hmm. Sorry, we didn't write down where it was. But ba 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 brute strength. One and a red for an instant target creature gets plus three, plus one, and trample until end of turn. Sure. Yeah, right. Sacred Kitty. Uh, single white mana for a 1-1 one, one with lifelink and embalm. Mm-hmm. As a reminder, embalm, uh, embalm for one white. Uh, embalm is, if it's in your graveyard, you can pay the embalm cost, you exile it, and then you create a token that is a copy of the card you're embalming, except that it is also a white zombie with no mana cost. You this, can only embalm as a sorcery. This card was real good. This card was actually surprisingly yeah. good, yeah. Hey man, it's not, it's not standard play. Yeah. That's how good it was. <laughs> Cancel. Love it. One blue blue instant counter target spell. Always happy to pick up more cancels, but that's me and I lose. <laughs> <laughs> Bloodlust Inciter is a single red mana for a 1-1. One, one. Human Warrior tap to give target creature haste until end of turn. This actually turned out to be pretty good as yeah, well. Yeah, early on I was like, not worth a card. And then later in the format I was like, I keep, I keep losing to Bloodlust Insider. Yeah. I mean, you don't lose to the Insider, but you lose to... Its ability. You know, yeah, like, I play this 5-5. Five, five. It has haste now, and it's attacking you, and you're yeah. like, oh, that sucks. Yeah, well, yeah. like, the constant threat of activation, yeah, you right? Just, you, you can never attack, you can never swing out. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you just play this on turn one, and you're always essentially a combat ahead, which mm-hmm. is pretty important, I, so... I was going to say, I, I, I love that the, the sacred cat, the token... Yeah, same pose. Uh, yeah, the implication that the cat, like... Was just spent its entire life there, died, didn't move, and then they mummified it, and it just it still didn't move. <laughs> well, the mummies are they just sat it there. They, that's yeah. good, mm-hmm. but also the mummies are animate, right. right? So I like that it it could be animate, but it it's died, not. and they mummified it, and it was like, okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm go, gonna go sit back to go back to my spot now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it still doesn't do anything. I, f- I found a spot. Yeah, ornery kudu, to a green for a three four antelope. I guess, a, I guess a kudu is an antelope, or at least in that realm. Same. Uh, King Philip came over for ungulate. good sweets. <laughs> King and phylum class were family, genus, species? Yeah. yeah. Family, genus? Antelopiae? <laughs> What's up? Animal. Though? Phylum would be the chordata. kudus um, are two species of antelope of the genus uh, Tregalif. Oh. oh, well, there you go. So they are antelope. All yep. right. There is the greater kudu and the lesser kudu. All right. Aww. Class for. And you Lomalia. get to choose if you have a greater kudu or lesser kudu, depending on where you put the plus one, plus one counter. <laughs> I assume family is probably ungulates. <laughs> uh, when, when ordinary kudu enters the battlefield, you put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature you control. So if you only have the kudu, it's a two, three for three, which is uh, it's fine. But if you have something else or somewhere you can <clears> dump <throat> the counters, like a. Like a uh, I mean, there were. Like dip- a dung beetle. Then it's a 3 4 four. Or, or there were cards that interacted with minus one, minus one yeah, counters exactly. in pretty impressive ways. In the sport of kudu dung spitting, uh, <laughs> yes, I'm listening. Contestants spit pellets of kudu dung, with the furthest distance reached being the winner. Gross. People get. People are real hard up for entertainment. The sport is mostly popular among the Afrikaner community in South Africa, and there is a world championship held every year. Neat. I hate it. I I like the the sport of kudu dung spitting involves spitting kudu dung. Yeah. (laughs) It's like, I don't know what I was expecting. If the kudu dung is spat out on a jet of vomit. (laughs) Or does that help? Does that assist projectile assistance? Performance enhancing barf. Um, See, you learn something in in Tap Tap. I feel really gross now. Speaking <laughs> of performance enhancing barf, next card is Miasmic Mummy. Uh, yeah. One in a black for a 2 2 zombie jackal. And when it enters the battlefield, each player discards a card. Yep. It's fine if you want a zombie. Splendid Agony. Mm. Very good, yeah, card. good card. Two in a black for an instant. <clears throat> Distribute two minus one minus one counters among one or two target creatures. Love it. Very good. Pursue Glory, won a couple games with this, three and a red instant attacking creatures get plus two plus oh until end of turn. So it's Trumpet Blast for one more mana, but if you don't need a Trumpet Blast effect, you can cycle it for two mana, which is you pay two and you discard this and you draw a different card. Remember, <laughs> always with any, any of these effects, double check the wording on it, because this is attacking creatures. Mm-hmm. 
So if you try to cast this in your pre-combat main phase, no creatures are attacking and nothing will happen. Have you ever uh, seen an opponent in Mitko cast Pursue Glory on your attack step? Yes. It's amazing. And then, like, there's a long pause and then a scoop. Because they think it's going to buff their creatures on defense? Yeah. 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 I was going to say, the, um, that, that card, the previous card with the, the minus one, minus one counters, Yeah, um, it's got that, there's that um, the sort of slight theme of the minus one, minus one counters uh, affecting other creatures, too, which mm -hmm. could make makes this sort of even more relevant. Yeah. Next up, Naga Vitalist. One in a green for a one, two Naga Druid. Tap to add one mana to your mana pool of any color that a land you already control could produce. So basically just mana ramp, which was always handy in this format. Trial of Ambition. Mm -hmm. One in a black for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent sacrifices a creature and then just sits there. And then if you play a cartouche, then you can return Trial of Ambition to your hand. Yep. The trials were generally pretty good, and this one yep. was pretty good. Yeah, repeatable uh, edicts. Mm -hmm. Gotta love them. Enigma Drake. Hell yeah. I never got to really get there with this one, but I saw someone do it, and it was pretty pretty spicy. One blue-red for a star four flying Drake. The star being that Enigma Drake's power is equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. So at worst, zero. <laughs> at best, who knows? Yeah. How bad do you want to make your deck? Um, even Wind Guide. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. If, yeah. yeah. <laughs> two white, blue for a 2-3 with flying and vigilance. Creature tokens you control, which includes any embalm creature, yep. also have flying and vigilance. And it has embalm for four white, blue. So if it mm -hmm. dies, you can bring it back. Yeah. Uh, yes. This card was really good. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Gideon's Intervention is our rare. Two white white for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, choose a card name. Your opponents can't cast spells of the chosen name and prevent all damage that would be dealt to you and permanents you control by sources with the chosen name. No. I don't really well, at like least not in limited, no. And I don't think it, it was good enough to see any playing constructed. Uh, like we have a full art forest. Ooh. Ooh. Like, why wouldn't not, not, not that one? Not that one. Why, why wouldn't you just do like a cranial or extraction or whatever yeah, like, exactly. like, yeah yeah like this is well this there is, is one in standard so well, that's, yeah, yeah but it's just like it's it's that effect which is only kind of a medium effect but worse mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. no it's not a good but card. we have a f we have a foil oh boy it's oh boy pretty spicy too it's a harsh mentor oh, oh shit. wow nice so nice two two four one in a red human cleric whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact creature or land that isn't about that isn't a mana ability Harsh Mentor deals two damage to that player. There's going to be some very happy Highlander players. Yeah. One very happy Highlander player and very sad Highlander players. I'm figuring out how much it's, it's worth. The, it's the... Oh. No, Wang. Mm -hmm. that's you, did not, it, you did it wrong. That's Wang. not that good. <laughs> it's only worth it $4. Keeps, $4. Uh, keeps hitting your hand. That's sad. Um, I mean... I might still take it. I don't know. I'd probably take one of the black removal spells, to be honest. Yeah. Look at like, us first picking removal. Splendid Agony or... I like... Probably maybe the trial. I would probably take the agony over the trial, personally. Really? Um, yeah, because I just I have more. Get some I, I have more choice with the agony than than with the ambition. I edicts are repeatable. Edicts are are awesome. Yeah, I love that. But there's no guarantee that you're going to pick anything up to to actually make that happen. Whereas no I, splendid agony is just like mm, that's just two minus one minus one counters. I would have to take the enigma Drake and just feel really bad about everything. Yeah, you would feel really bad. If like, I'm going to take, it, I'm tempted by the wind guide to be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah, the wind a guide is card, it's going to be yeah. the wind guide for sure. You the wind that? guide is God, so you're, much. Cl you're a monster. But, but like in a normal, absolutely. But yeah, because like in a normal draft deck, you don't you don't even want to run that many. No. Uh, instant instant sorcery. sorceries, like you might run like five or something. Yeah, yeah. and see two or three of them. Yeah. Right. So what did we learn today? First pick removal. Yep. Yeah. Apparently so. Mm -hmm. Always Removal's first pick always removal. Always good. I mean, yep. it, it is always interesting to look at these decks like in sort of isolation, as opposed to you know like we were talking about with the Dragon's Maze. Like if you were actually doing a Dragon's Maze draft, mm. those guild gates go up suddenly in value. Mm -hmm. Yes. Whereas just Sitting here now, assuming you're doing like a, a like a, a chaos draft, a chaos or, draft or something, hmm. uh, then you can you're sort of looking at it in a different context. I, I mean, actually, in a chaos draft, you're looking at it as mana fixing. To be honest, because mm -hmm. yeah, 
God knows what you're going to get into with a, with a chaos draft. Pack one, like pack one, pick one. <coughs> even in Dragon's Maze, I think I still take Turn and Burn, just because it was a very, very powerful card in that format. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the Guild Gate's not that far behind. It, ain't, it certainly it's, ain't coming around. So it's probably above Notion Thief. Yeah, I would take it. I, it's probably two or three in yeah. that pack for me. So, so that is going to do it for Tap Tap Concede for this week. Thanks so much for joining us for our. February cracking of the packs. Uh, a reminder, the show is brought to you by CardKingdom.com at CardKingdom.com slash LRR and also by you at Patreon.com slash LoadingReadyRun. So, thanks everybody for joining us. For Cameron, James, and myself, that is it, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.